Yes, there we go. Welcome, everybody. Cannabis News with Joe Claire. It is February 20th, 2019. Presented, as always, by the Marijuana Times. Click that video tab at marijuanatimes.org to find the show. Also, a bunch of great articles there as well. Today or tonight, whenever you're watching this, we're talking about um, new marijuana law reform measure proposals from the Wisconsin governor. Also, kind of an older story from earlier this month out of Los Angeles that I want to keep you all up to date on. And I'll play you an interview that I did earlier today with Montel Williams, the one and only Montel Williams. All of that is coming up. But first, of course, Cannabis News is brought to you by NatureSide. Nature-Side.com and their organic, all-natural pesticides. If you're growing in a state where it is legal to cultivate cannabis, make sure you're growing safe and poison-free. Make sure you're regulatory compliant and make sure... You're not putting harmful chemicals on what you are growing or using banned pesticides. You can do all of these things with NatureSide. Nature-Side.com and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Go check them out there. A proud sponsor of Cannabis News. This first story from Julia Granowitz at MarijuanaTimes.org. Wisconsin governor introduces spending bill with major changes to state cannabis laws uh, among the Changes that Governor Tony Evers has included in the spending bill's provisions to both decriminalize possession of small amounts of cannabis and expand access to CBD and other medical marijuana products. Uh, the bill would also create a system for licensing cultivators, testers, and retailers, permit home cultivation of medical marijuana, and allow people to expunge past cannabis related convictions. As a cancer survivor, the governor said, I know the side effects of a major illness can make every day. I know the side effects of a major illness can make everyday tasks a challenge. People shouldn't be treated as criminals for accessing a desperately needed medication. They can alleviate their suffering. Uh, Currently, the state only allows CBD for seizure disorders, but the new proposal would remove the requirement for a doctor's recommendation for CBD. Instead, the new bill would create a full medical cannabis program where it could be grown and sold within the state. Uh, Of course, a list of qualifying conditions such as cancer, AIDS, chronic pain, PTSD, glaucoma, and more. Those patients could access full-strength medical cannabis. So good news in Wisconsin. Uh, they have a new governor there, obviously, <laughs> who uh, has a bit of a different idea, a bit of a different uh, stance, position, if you will, when it comes to cannabis and uh, cannabis law reform. So hopefully things continue to go in the right direction in Wisconsin. You may remember last year, When everybody was voting on things, people in Wisconsin, a lot of counties, jurisdictions voted on non-binding resolutions in support of marijuana law reform. And uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, all of them passed. I may be wrong about that. I may be thinking about something else. I know a lot of them passed. Correct me if I'm wrong. In the comments. Speaking of the comments, by the way, I've seen some comments on YouTube uh, objecting to my removal of the Cheech and Chong poster over my shoulder and replacing it with Rick and Morty. I do that periodically, kind of to change the visual aesthetics that's going on with the show. We've had the, uh, the Reefer Madness poster from the 1930s. Uh, obviously, we've had the, uh, the the Bob Marley poster came next. And then the Cheech and Chong poster was up there for a while. I changed it to Rick and Morty. Maybe I go back to Cheech and Chong. I don't know. Maybe if it bothers people, I have, I know, I have no problem with Cheech and Chong. Plus, as some people have pointed out, the Cheech and Chong poster does go well with the curtains, because if you notice the Cheech and Chong poster, Cheech and Chong themselves, they're kind of like like Cheech and Chong shaped windows into like a marijuana field. There's a lot of stuff going on. I can see why people like the uh, the poster. And maybe if you all get annoyed enough in the comments, I'll change it. <laughs> I'll throw up my hands in disgust and say, fine, fine. I'll come back with the Cheech and Chong poster. And also, if you all have any other ideas for posters, you know, pop some... Uh, Oh, you can't put screenshots in YouTube comments, can you? Um, can you put Amazon links in there so I can go buy a poster? I don't know. No, that's not a good idea at all. Just just say, hey, how about a poster of this, blank? And if I like it, I'll I'll go look for it. How about that? <laughs> that's a deal. <laughs> this next story from mjbizdaily.com. As I said, it's from earlier this month, but it's something I want to keep you all updated on because Los Angeles is a huge, huge cannabis market. It also happens to be the headquarters the main headquarters for the Marijuana Times. Uh, Los Angeles has finally begun awarding its second round of cannabis business permits with those licenses going to growers, edible makers, and other non-retail companies that have long been a part of the city's marijuana supply chain. 
The LA Department of Cannabis Regulation on January 24th, quote, began to issue temporary approval to phase two priority processing applicants and so far has also authorized 34 applicants to engage in non-retail commercial cannabis activities. According to the agency, spokeswoman Michelle Garakayan, Garakayan wrote in an email uh, to Marijuana Business Daily. Office received nearly 600 applications during the application window last year. The second round follows the first from last year, which applied only to long-standing retailers that had been in operation since at least 2007. There are now 170 licensed retailers in the city, according to the DCR website. Uh, the agency continues to process about 400 other Phase two applications, although most of those applicants have informed DRC that they are not still not ready for an on-site inspection that is a prerequisite, according to Garrett Cann. Um, the next licensing window, Phase three, which doesn't require any past business history in the city and is open to all comers, has yet to be scheduled by the DCR. So obviously they're doing different levels of bringing people into the, the retail and other aspects uh, of the marijuana industry in Los Angeles. Progress continues there as well. Now, as promised, my interview earlier today with Montel Williams. You can check out his products at montelwilliams.com. They're called Montel by Select. If you want the CBD products, you can order them from the website. If you want the uh, the new THC line of Montel by Select, he mentions in the interview it's um, California, Oregon, Arizona, maybe coming soon to Nevada. So if you're out west and uh, you want to check that out, look for Montel by Select in your nearest dispensary. Thanks everybody for checking us out. Keep sharing, commenting, liking, all that stuff. Now, without further ado, it was a, a big a big moment in my career. It was pretty, uh, you know, I've interviewed a lot of interesting people in my career, and this is definitely up there. My interview with... Montel Williams. We'll see you all next time right here on Cannabis News. Welcome back to the show, everybody. On the video chat, we have Montel Williams, of course. Very well-known, uh, former talk show host, entrepreneur, medical cannabis advocate. Montel, welcome to the show, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Not a problem. Uh, for those of people out there who are watching and listening and may not remember, uh, can you give us a little bit of a background on how you became one of the very first celebrities to use your influence to advocate for uh, medical cannabis some 20 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's an important point that you just bring up yourself, uh, Joe, and, and that is long before cannabis be, became the vogue issue that people are talking about now the last three or four years, now I've been involved in cannabis uh, uh, pushing forward legislation trying to represent patients around the country since really 2000 back when I was diagnosed with MS. I started using cannabis as an alternative to opioids back then, um, understanding its medicinal benefits over being addicted to some of the things that they were putting me on. Absolutely. It's been an uh, incredible journey. How did that go? How'd you go from there to uh, creating your company and creating uh, Montel by Select? Well, I mean, you know, that, that is a, a, a long road. We're talking about I started utilizing cannabis as a, for myself in my own health and wellness regimen back in really 2001, 2001 and a half. And back then, long before anybody in the entire country was even discussing CBD or looking at full spectrum cannabinoids as an alternative to opioids, I literally was seeking that out myself back then. Now, you know, over the course of, you know, my first eight years of, of cannabis use, you know, I started finding it really difficult to find products that weren't adulterated with lots of different caustic chemicals and being processed in ways that I didn't really support. And so, honestly, almost about nine years ago, I took my first step into uh, uh, starting a company, but it, it didn't work out. And I don't think the, that nationally the country was ready for, you know, a transition to cannabinoids. And then in the last three or four years, I've literally been disgusted by some of the products that I have found in various places that call themselves dispensaries or call themselves pharmacies where, you know, the product is so adulterated with caustic chemicals that you, know, you don't know what it is you're putting in your body. And so uh, what's that old saying? If you can't find something done right, do it yourself. 
So I decided that it was time to re-enter the marketplace and, and produce a product that I think is, is being done with a standard that is, is a, almost a standard setter in the entire industry. I am, uh, definitely have been an anti-butane or BHO uh, advocate for really since the beginning of my cannabis use. And when I started to find and look around for, you know, companies that could help me produce a product that was an efficacious enough product that I knew I could put my name on to recommend to others, you know, it, it ended up bringing me to Cura, which is, you know, a company that, that sets some pretty high standards in their extraction process and in their testing and validating process of their product. And I was really happy with the product that we were able to produce. Awesome. So uh, if people are interested in checking out what you've created, uh, where are some of the places they can find the products and what are some of the products uh, that they can find? Yeah, if you go up on MontelWilliams.com right now, you can find our CBD product, which is available in 46 states around the country. And you can order it directly and have it delivered to your front door. And this is a hemp-based CBD product that is probably one of the best, you know, price value propositions in the marketplace today. Because we, we I was one of the first to create a capsule or a, and a, a gel cap that has CBD in it, but our CBD is a broader spectrum CBD product. Because what I've done is I've uh, uh, formulated CBD along with some very food grade terpenes that are digestible terpenes that help to elicit the response that most people are looking for. And they come in two different brands. One is alert, one is relaxed. And those terpene formulations are specific to those, each individual formulation. And Again, it's made from hemp, 100% uh, legal, you know, for those who were worried about euphoria and trying to understand the differences, you know, that's one of the things I've found also in the last couple of months that there is a lot of product out here in the marketplace. There's not a lot of education out here trying to make people understand what the need for cannabinoids is to begin with. And, you know, most people don't understand that in the last 15 years, we've identified within the human body a, if you will, I'll call it loosely, a secondary, you know, uh, uh, sympathetic nervous system. It's called your endocannabinoid system that the most written and published medical documents around the world right now seem to imply that it's that endocannabinoid system that is responsible for our cellular homeostasis, even at the mitochondrial level. So, you know, when we were little rodents running around on the savannah 1,500 years ago and 1,000 years ago, we were literally seeking out this plant to give us the benefits of just cellular balance and didn't even know that that's why we were seeking out. That's part of the reason why people should be enjoying broader spectrum cannabinoids now because we know that it has an analgesic, anti-inflammatory, and in some ways a neuroprotective property to it. And, you know, as science starts to develop out more fact and starts publishing more data, people will start to understand that this is something that should be probably part of your daily regimen and supplemental regimen, just like vitamin D3. Yeah, the, uh, the advancements have really been incredible. Uh, what's some of the feedback you've gotten? I imagine you get a ton of, of people writing to you and through, through your website and social media stuff. What's some of the feedback you've gotten from the product so far? Well, I mean, from our hemp-based CBD product alone, I've been really, you know, pleasantly surprised by the reaction I've gotten from people who suffer from a myriad of different maladies, everything from have going through chemo and cancer and having beat that to actually suffering from depression, having lethargy and other issues that in their day-to-day -day life, they've been able to, you know, use some of our, our product and it seems for them to help them overcome some of those issues that they are facing. That's in the cannabinoid, I mean, in the, the hemp-based CBD product. Now, I also, in right now, two states, Oregon and California, soon to be three, Arizona, and fourth one, hopefully Nevada very soon, I have a full-spectrum cannabinoid product that includes THC in those states where medical marijuana is legal. And 
the feedback I've gotten from uh, those states, I, I visit Oregon quite often and go to dispensaries and talk to patients who actually order and take my product. And they walk out of really profoundly impacted by, you know, the fact that they can consume something that, though it might give them a slight euphoria, it is not so overwhelming. It's it's more manageable. Uh, my product that I have out in the marketplace right now that's called our, um, you know, 9 to 1 or our 95.5, literally most people walk up to me and, and respond to the fact that it's the clearest buzz that they've ever had. And that's really why I was formulated that way because what I've done is I've also taken the time. I am the formulator personally. I literally am the guy. You know, I got my engineering degree from the United States Naval Academy and know enough about engineering to be dangerous, know enough about chemical extraction to be dangerous. So I literally am the person who is formulating a product. And what I've done is with my THC product in the states where it is available and it is legal, you know, we have a combination of THC and CBD in the same formulation of cannabinoids. So um, I'm utilizing the CBD to give a person a broader entourage effect that seems to do exactly what it is we've set out to do. It's a... Uh... It's amazing stuff. Uh, first of all, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for coming on the show, uh, Montel, and urge everybody to check out MontelWilliams.com. I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for being uh, one of the original people. As I said, back when you started, the, the list of celebrities that were advocating for medical cannabis was a very, very short one. And uh, well, now I'll tell you, you know, there were about three of us that were out yeah. there actually advocating. <laughs> the rest of them were hiding in there behind their gates, afraid to say something because they were afraid to, to lose their position and their status. Absolutely. And uh, times have changed. And uh, I want to thank you for the part you've played in that and uh, for being on here today. And as I said, MontelWilliams.com. Go check it out if you're on the West Coast. Check out Montel by Select uh, where you can find it. Montel, thanks for being on the show and uh, have a great day. Thanks so much, Joe. And good luck to you, my friend. I'm glad you're doing this and getting information out to the people that need it. Because, you know, one of the biggest problems I will say again right now in this industry is that you know, we have 34 states that have passed medical marijuana or recreational marijuana laws, and we have product available to the public, but no one's taking the time to slow this down and educate people as to why it's necessary. So I thank you for giving us a chance to do that today. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. No, thank you. You be well. Thanks, sir.